and welcome back to the Bella Bells podcast. My name is Bella Bells, and today I have with me a returning guest, Roadman. Or would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, Roadman out here, you get me? Okay, okay. Vibes. So I feel like you guys can already guess what we're going to be talking about. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you know I have been dancing around the big topic right now. Whew! Made in Lagos. Wizkid finally dropped Made in Lagos. Um, it was pushed forward from the release date that he had said. I think he pushed it forward by like a week or so. Uh, two weeks? Two weeks, yeah. About two weeks, yeah. Because of the NSARS protest. Yeah. NSARS now, you know. Yeah, 100%. And bad governance. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we talked about that in the last episode, the fact that he pushed it forward. But this should be actually his fourth studio album under Wizkid. But if you're, like, counting um, sounds from the other side, which is, like, released under... What was it? Starboy? Oh, yeah. Starboy. Then it should be... Yeah, it should be his fifth studio album. Um, but sounds from the other side, was it? It was, a, it was an EP. It was an EP. Okay, yeah. So then it really is a full studio album. I just wanted... To, do you get what I mean? I don't like doing that, like, leaving out EPs. I don't know why. Like, it's just... Yeah. It's like, yeah, it was an album, but... Yeah, I mean, it was still a body of work, so... I get that. Um, Honestly, when did you first start listening to Wizkid? Since day one, you know, since holla at your boy, don't mm. do. Tease me, tease me, tease me, me baby. You know, I love my baby. That's my baby. Wow. Everything, you get me? Oh, yeah. Punke, pakulumo, pakulumo. Pakulumo. Whiskey's been a, it's been a legend, you know, of yeah. mine. I mean, he's really, he's grown from that time. Like, that guy looks like a kid in those music videos, like young. He still looks like a kid look either. Is it holla at your boy where it's like in the like basketball court, like the fencing, the everything? So, and, yeah. Guy. yeah, but now he's grown. Now this is full blown. How old is he? 30? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy to me. You don't, sometimes I never really reflect on the fact that like artists become like adults, adults. Especially the ones who started their music career like early, early on, like teens. I'm like, wait, they're like 30 years old. Like Rihanna is, um, that's a grown woman now from 16 to now. But anyways, back to his kid. Back to his kid. Hmm. First thoughts on the album. Yeah. Uh, it's a great album. Um, mature. Great vibes. Great melody. I like the album. Yeah. For me, I think my first like go at the album, my first take, like first run through. A big thing for me was like I'm trying to like decide between. Am I saying it's like consistent? There's like a oneness to it, or is it like monotonous? And I that's why like I didn't even want to comment it because I'm like this is just my first listen, but like it was something that was on my mind a lot. I'm like, is this just a cohesive thing or is it monotonous? But I do think even before listening, right? I feel like a lot of people skip over album art. Guys, that album art for me is superb. Like it just it reflects the album as a whole. You know, as you said, like very mature, very like I feel like he's definitely refined a certain sound. Yeah. And that album like the album art, the picture itself, like the photography, the typography with the um, the titling, everything. It just feels very sleek, very clean yeah. cut, but the still color, mm, very nude ish. Pastel, nice, like yeah. you know, it just has it has the right feel for the album, which I'm very like happy about because I think I saw like I don't know if it was leaked art for an hour or when they did the single. And it was just this, like, black thing, you know. Like, Different colors yeah. and backgrounds, yeah. I mean, I guess maybe the artist, you know, was going for something. But I just, you know, it wasn't my favorite. I'll say that. Didn't really interpret what they were going for. But definitely the album art is superb. I wish I could find out, though, like, who took the picture. Yeah, I don't know who took the picture either, but... We're going to have to look for that. Hmm. Where do we start? I'm thinking... Reckless, because you were just playing for me Reckless earlier, right? Yeah. And, like, we talked about how I don't think I had properly, like, gauged the lyrics before. I don't even think by the time I was listening, they were up on Genius. But, like, Reckless. Yeah, that's a great intro. The way the song started itself, you know? The beats as... The beats dropped and he came in. I'm still over now, 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 now. What does he even say? Because I think it's impactful. Like, what do you say? The first line is something... Yeah, I'm still a winner, winner, winner. And they're praying on my downfall. Hmm. Yeah. That's what he's saying, you know. And he's come a long way, you know, to this album. And I feel he did a lot of work. Because I was on his Instagram the other day. And mm -hmm. um, 
I saw the the person that mixed almost all the songs on the album wow. has been working with Whiskey for the past like three two years mm-hmm. on this particular album. So it's come a very long way, and yeah, I feel like he did a very great job lyrically, uh, melod- with the melody on Reckless. Yeah, on Reckless. Yeah. So basically, you feel like it was a good intro to the album, like yeah. it set the pace. I I wonder because I know you've spoken about mm-hmm. how. Um, it's one of those songs where it feels like the artist is really pouring the how how uh, how thoughts. <laughs> wow. Okay, we're gonna start tallying the amount of times that something goes wrong with what <laughs> I'm trying to say because this is getting out of hand. Um, but basically, when an artist is pouring their heart out, and it's like very like. Y- <sighs> Yeah, I think it's just one of those songs where it's like you can feel like the artist is really pouring their heart out. <laughs> you know what? The good thing about me is that I'm not ashamed. But I don't know what happens. Anyways, pouring their heart out, right? And um, de- like definitely through the lyrics, you get that sort of feel. But I just wonder what does that mean in terms of like the whole album? Do you feel like that album is the album is one of those that sort of speaks to this idea of like struggling to get to where you are like is that theme consistent after no, the intro i i don't think so i think the album has a classic the album has a classic whiskey vibe you know it's about good vibes spreading love you know just enjoying life you know mm-hmm. and that's whiskey's uh, that's whiskey's brand so um i and i am biased because i love whiskey so mm-hmm. i w- most of the things i would say today would be positive about the album because I just totally love the album and I've been waiting for the album for a very long time I mean aren't we all a bit biased fair I feel like at some point we all become a bit biased I think my thing is just definitely I don't really care for people loving or hating albums or I just want to know why you know I just love the breakdown of what exactly is it or what really went into this body of work you know what does it mean as like a whole just not taking things for like first of all not taking the artist's work for granted you know Taking time to appreciate, it. as you said, man, three years in, like, this guy's been talking about this album for long, yeah. like, you know? So really taking the time to just say, let me listen, let me understand, let me, like, research this whole thing, as opposed to just, ah, uh, five minutes in, yeah, 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 bangers, we move. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely, I think, hmm, hmm, after that intro, guys, Ginger's the second track, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one for me. And, like, I know, you know, it's this type of thing of, oh, guys, who only like club bangers. You know, you don't really appreciate music. It's okay. By the way, it's okay. We need a club banger, okay? We need a club banger. And definitely, for me, it's Ginger. Like, it's just one of those things where it's, like, two legends on the same track. Like, you have to love it. Like, I love when Whiskey and Burner Boy team up. Like, yeah. that aspect, you know, they did this thing where I'm like, I don't usually see this and I like it. There's, like, a duet. Duet. <laughs> I know you can it's, a, it's like just trying to encourage me it's okay just say the word it's like a duet right yeah. and like it, when they're doing the chorus and it's sort of like you don't get annoyed by the repetition of the lyrics simply because when you are looking for that like club banger you want something where it's like the verses are not too long you can learn the words do you Easily, get what I mean yeah, yeah you want to have an upbeat type of thing feel good song which you can participate in and I think they gave that with that like repeated chorus and that duet aspect to it no yeah. i loved it it's like you know when you're with your friend right and you both know the lyrics to the song and like you do one line he does, he does one line, line or yeah. like you sing it together it has a very like like camaraderie to it i like it yeah, yeah no, definitely I think definitely the chorus had a very the song had a very good chemistry mm-hmm. yeah no but for me i think one key thing though that i took away especially on that track was that like it was very important that burner boy was on it like his influence I feel like when that song was, it was kind of like obvious, simply from like the product, the production. Yeah, like yeah, the, the production, beat the beat, even the lyrics. Like it was very much like that song could have been on African Giant. Possibly, yeah, that, that could have happened. Could have been Bebo, like it could have been. Yeah, I feel like it just it. It's like a better boy song, to be honest. That's fair. That's fair, but you can't take. Uh, uh, the credit away from Whiskey too. He killed it on that song too. Mm-hmm. Do you agree? Hmm. <laughs> I would say that they worked very well together and it turned out to be great. But 
I if the credits were switched and it was Burner Boy featuring Wizkid, it might make more sense to me. That's fair, I guess. Yeah, that's fair. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing, though. Did you peep the key change at the end of the song? Listen, do you know that was one of my favorite parts of it? I literally, like, in my, like, notes and stuff, I was literally just thinking that that last Burner Boy verse or, like, the outro. Yeah. Like, I love when he does that because that's something he does usually, right? It's like they sort of, like fade out the drums and then he it goes off yeah the key i don't know if it is it just like increasing the order the tune or the, the key the key yeah ah that's what it is okay yeah because it's like they it raised the key a yeah. bit and then you sang on a higher mm-hmm. note yeah. it's like he you really like they emphasize on his voice and i love when you do that because you also see um him do it with other songs where it's like now they don't raise the key but they just emphasize his voice when it's actually like more like belting singing and stuff but that was a unique touch to it yeah Oh, but then that's going back to what I was saying. Was like, it a Burner Boy song? <laughs> <laughs> was it really Whiskey's song? It's on Whiskey's album. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For formalities, okay. <laughs> no problem. But yeah. Um, hmm. Speaking of features, right? I feel like that being the first track on the album with a feature, I just think it was like an indication of the standard of features that we were going to get. Um, you know this is one thing where this album didn't miss. I would give 10 out of 10 when it came to features. Every feature on this Made in Lagos felt like it was handpicked, if we can use that word. It was, he aligned that feature with the song. You knew that this song was meant for this feature and it blended so well. Like it was, ah, uh, no, it was odd. It was odd. It was great. The features were perfect. I especially, even the new artists that are coming up, Thames, Te- mm-hmm. Iowa, you know, Great features. Even projects. Even I think projects, projects yeah. is pretty good. Yeah. And like it no, it was it was very well done. And why I think I it even I noticed that a lot is because I feel we're at that place with a lot of big in um African acts who are like being recognized internationally where they're trying to climb the ladder by collecting features like Infinity Stones from like America, Europe and sometimes the features don't feel like they fit the song, you know? Yeah. It feels like they made the song, they finished, everything was nice, then they told her, like, first send us a verse. To get more exposure. You know, and that's the thing, you know, that is a goal, right? Getting that exposure, getting, opening yourself up to a new audience. But sometimes, you know, you ask yourself, like, at what cost, right? Um, it's like striking a balance. But I, at the end of the day, I think everyone wants to be successful in music. So would you fault them for doing that? Well, I mean, that's the thing. We can't also... That's you know it's interesting that you call that like faulting them. I we have to critique like Fair. should we? I mean, that's my thing, right? It's like I I feel like as a listener, if an artist is gonna spend years on something, right? They're gonna put in work. Why it, should I be able to just kind of just take it as it is and walk away? If I'm gonna appreciate it, let me appreciate it. And speak about why I appreciate it, right? Let me talk about what is it about it, you know? Because they put in work. And if it's, like, something that I don't appreciate, you should still talk about that. It's not faulting them. It's just notice. That just shows, like, I took the time to really listen to their features across, right? To think about the song as a whole. True. It's more of a... The fact that you can pick something out and be like, actually, this thing, I didn't think of it. It means that you appreciated it enough to properly listen, Right? It's like now I think there's like blind critique and this blind, uh, what is the opposite of critique? Um, appreciation. Appreciation. Yeah, that one is obvious. And you always know when it's very obvious, you know? Your guy is just trashing and oh, this whiskey is rubbish. What, 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 what? Then you ask them, okay, now, what Why? is it? Why? Yeah. Uh, somebody can't tell you anything. That's when you know it's just whatever. But this, nah. I don't think it's faulting him. It's just really like. One, but whiskey. I mean, there's nothing to fault here. I did really well. One thing that was odd though to me, or like interesting, was that the only feature from a rapper I would say was Skepta. On um, what's this? Yeah, song? on long time. Yeah, oh, is it long time. Is it called long time? Yeah, it's called long time. Yeah, long time. Was that not like odd to you? Did you not like notice the rest was vocalist? Yeah, I think it, it also for that song it was. I got energy vibes from that song. Yes, it was very... Hmm. I got a lot of energy. Like, you know the song Energy? Yeah, of course. It was a, yeah. a hit. 
why before i even give my why what like how did you you know what made you feel like it was like energy i feel it was skeptical for me like mm -hmm. he didn't it was like his verses weren't striking enough for me to think of another song mm -hmm. than energy that yeah. was the reason i think like i yeah. yeah sorry very similar to the lyrics very similar to energy in a way yeah i actually interrupted you because i got like so excited because that's the exact thing i had noticed and i was like am i being too picky at some point but it's it was very distinct because i also noticed like the keys even the drums they were very similar if not the same as energy and then i'm like okay i mean really drums can be anywhere do you know what i mean keys are, you know but then I listen, I listen, and I listen to Skepta's words. And you're right. It's There's actually lines which are, it's usually almost the same. So, like, I think in, yeah, in Energy, the guy goes, hey, because I'm about to speak a verse. Like, I'm not going to rap it because my flow is whack, but I'm about to speak. He goes, hey, they better get used to the flex. African man, you see the jewels on my neck. Black James Bond, that's the new silhouette. You see me in the street and I was moving correct. And then he goes... Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Now that's in energy. energy. Now in long time he goes white tee, black hoodie. You see the school. No. Is that in the next one? Yes it is. He goes you see the white tee, black hoodie. You see the sauce. Big swag, bang coolie. Speak up. Who's hating? What's goody? I've been the boss. Star boy. Chat to me. So do you see what I'm saying? It's the same like I don't know connotations. Yeah, connotations, syllables, like it's even I think I guys, I think I didn't do too bad with like, you know, delivering on the way he also um raps the verse, but like it's literally the same count. Like it's the same count, it's the same you know how you write a poem and like they would do this thing of like how you could have um rhyming schemes and yeah. like maybe A B um A B A B A B. So that type of thing, it's the exact same thing happening here. Um, but at, at the end of the day, that's Skepta's style, though. If you listen yeah. to Skepta, that's the way he raps. Mm, I might have to agree. That's Skepta on Afrobeat songs. Fair. That's not Skepta with Jeremy. That, that's not... Mm -mm, that is not the Skepta from... Um, from Konnichiwa. Yeah, Konnichiwa. That's, what that, that's not the same Skepta. <laughs> yeah, Maybe it's true. like Afrobeat Skepta. <laughs> This is soft swag on the beach, Skepta. This is, you know, too cool, Skepta. This is take it easy, bang coolie, African man, jewels on my neck. <laughs> You're just looking at me. Guys, I, I think we need visuals for this podcast, by the way. <laughs> you see the way people look at me here. <laughs> I'm here listening to you. You're going, you're going off. You're doing your thing. It seems like I also want to be on that track. Guys, they should have given me a verse. You think I can't deliver? With what vocals, though? No, I'm rapping. Okay. I don't need, I can't sing, but you know, guys, I have buzz. Don't worry. But yeah, no, honestly, long time. But like, I mean, aside from all of that, do you? How do you feel about long time? It's chill. It, it's not. It wasn't the best song on the album. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was chill. I think, I'd listen to it. Yeah, I'd listen to it, but it wasn't strike it. Mm -hmm. It was chill. Yeah. Okay. What do you think about the song? I mean, it's kind of the same way. Like, it's just one of those where it doesn't really stand out to me. But I can't really say it's bad, can you? I still listen to it, though. It's Wheezy Line, you know? Yeah, I know. It's my up. One. Whiskey the FC here. Yeah. <laughs> but to let Bob boys, come on. <laughs> Anyways, please. Star boy. boy. Did you listen to Mighty Wine? I mean, of course. Yes. Mighty Wine is good. Well, you don't yeah. think that's good? No, it is the drums. Like, <clears throat> but I, when I listened to Mighty Wine, I got um Naughty Ride vibes. Hmm, I don't know that song. Naughty Ride with Major Laser on Sounds from the Other Side. You said uh, you didn't I like would, that album. yeah, yeah. Sounds from the Other Side, you can't, you can't test me on that because I will 100% please give me zero. Like, mom, please give me zero because Sounds from the Other Side, it didn't land for me. Like, I don't even think I listened properly. That's where I have to admit, like. I think I was just at that point where it's like I had let Wizkid leave my mind, you know. I've come back. I'm here to repent. <laughs> but at that time, he had left my Are mind. You I was even, I was even confused because I'm seeing Starboy. I don't know if this is my Wizkid. Like, you know. Are you ready to repent though? In a moderation. 
<laughs> We're repenting in moderation. But you know, yeah, one thing I like, Mighty Wine, there's a way he emphasizes the dance and bounce, right? Those two words on like the beat. Like it's very, ah, the delivery was different, you know? Like, but, you know, I talked about dance and bounce. This is where now things become a bit iffy. The lyrical content was lacking at this point. In the song? I feel like in this, well, the song is a good example of it throughout the album. Like, but comparing it to his former albums, would you say the lyrical content in this album was better or worse? Um, I wouldn't say that it's, um, but that's the thing. It's not really that I'm judging the lyrical content. Do you get what I mean? Uh, uh, people should sing what they want to sing or rap what they want to sing. That's the, you know, what's expression, in them. Yeah, self-expression, expression. self-expression. That's not what I'm judging. What I'm judging, I think, is more that it was all the same thing. I just expected some range between that, right? Other than sex and women and, you know, being the guy or what I call him promiscuous. I don't know. I just, I didn't really hear anything else. After Reckless. Nah, blessed. Yeah, blessed. Wasn't it Demi Mali? You said, hey, 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 hey. You know me, my songs are not like this. Like nah, Demi that, Mali probably won't say, "Hey, nah, this is the topic." That is not. That is that is not true. I do not agree because Whiskey, Whiskey told invited Demi Mali on the song. It is Whiskey's song at the end of the, the day. The manager told you. You can't. Uh, did Did Demi Mali tell you that? Ah, uh, he called me. Yeah. Yeah. No. On what's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, is it the phone in uh, Uganda? Or? No. In fact, we were talking on WhatsApp. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. If that, you say, if you say so. Mm, so well, actually, uh, when we were that. talking. Yeah, that's when he mentioned to me, he's the one who told Whiskey, hey, for us this song is going to be a bit different. You know, Whiskey has always been about being blessed. Exactly! And blessed and... That's why I'm wondering. That's exactly what I'm wondering. Yeah, I that's why agree. that is Whiskey's idea. Well, okay, I'm going to say there are 14 songs that two out of three, no, two, Reckless and Blessed, are the two out of 14 which are not about sex. Yeah, but Whiskey sings about sex. Uh, but we know you, Whiskey was singing about Okay, sex. guys, are we taking notes yet? Did you not just say Whiskey has always been singing about being yeah, blessed? Yeah, he and also... Them? No, it's both. Exactly. He has so always ha- been doing both. Right? On yeah. other albums, you've seen that sort of variety in content and lyrical content and message and whatnot. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I didn't really get that from this album. And Superstar. Superstar was mostly about Don't Do, Tease Me, uh, Love My Baby. Joy was great. Joy had so much variety. So, I really think that we're saying the same thing. You just don't want to admit it. <laughs> that what? That this album was a lot about sex. Yes, which there's nothing There's nothing wrong with him talking about True sex, right? True love is about love. Which love? Love of the waste? Because me was like, <laughs> I was hearing that love the waste. <laughs> and that she's the only man makes me something that, like... Smile. I love you. Smile. Yeah, yeah. I love okay. you when you I can take smile. that. I can yeah. take that. But my thing is this. Okay, so say there is a bit more range than I seem to have, like, perceived. I still wonder, though, aren't there certain songs on here which are a bit, like, fillers? It, yeah. It, you are, it did feel like there were some yeah. fillers there. 14 songs, was it necessary? Yeah, probably not, but it was a great album altogether. I would still keep saying that to the end of this podcast. All right, all right. <laughs> I mean, this is not to say it was a bad album. Yeah. It's just to say, really, like, 14 songs, yeah, it. I don't feel it was necessary. Sim- simply because a number of those songs... Were fillers. It were fillers. It felt like the same song being repeated, right? That's a key thing that I think can really change up the feel of an album. Can you get the number right? Like, do you know what I mean? The removal or adding of one song can change a lot, you know? True. The good thing, though, I will say is that he didn't put out too many singles beforehand. You know, some artists, they'll put out all oh, the singles, and it's like, now we've heard the whole album. Oh, well, well, What's left? <laughs> like, really? The intro, that's left. But yeah. No, definitely. Ah, speaking of Smile. So you liked it, right? You loved it. I like Smile. Because yeah. I like her, too, so. I mean, it's like, for me, it's like Smile and like Peace of Me. I don't I don't really have much to say about them or really much to feel. It just kind of feels like... R&B vibe. R&B. I don't think I'm the biggest R&B fan, but I really do feel like her, Ella Mai, like they're great singers. Well, her, I would say, is the, you know, the more developed singer, maybe, just to, you know, keep things neutral. But um, they did a great job, but 
it's a bit too sleepy for me. Like, it's just not exciting. I think I have to also admit, coming into this hour, I, I came with expectations, right, of... Like, I think sometimes when I listen to um, certain artists, if I'm too used to, like, upbeat or, like, not even upbeat, actually. I just didn't expect this type of R&B song. Yeah, but I feel like that's also part of the problem. Expectations. No. I'm just admitting that I, I had that expectation. And, yeah. like, it's not to say... That's fair. Like, it's fair to have an expectation. It's fair, but you shouldn't let that expectation... Uh... Uh spoil the actual album I like you shouldn't let that cloud what the actual album is trying to say but you understand that i mean like the whole thing is down to perception how i perceive it how you perceive it that how he made it it will always be different there's nothing wrong with it being different no i'm not saying uh-huh. it's not absolutely the way someone listening to this podcast would take the album will be different from the way I took the album. Mm. So, but if the person had an expectation before coming into the album, that expectation is going to be like a like a limit. Like mm. It's going to be a dampening limit when listening to the album. If he meets it or he supersedes the expectation. Mm-hmm. So, it doesn't... You should... If I feel like if you want to take an objective, objective look at an album... Mm-hmm. You should remove expectation and just listen to the body of work. And do you for think what it being, for what it is being a diehard Whiskey fan allows you to uh, listen objectively? Absolutely. Then... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, I'm people a, are lying I'm here. a musician myself. Yeah, but absolutely. So, I, I, und- I totally agree. My bias. Fan. It comes I, in when it's appropriate. <laughs> then when you don't want it to be there, you kind of like throw it away. <laughs> Is that what's happening here? If nah. you just tell me in secret, then like I'll keep it in mind. So that I don't uh, ask you. You just tell me in secret. I agree. I agree my bias plays a part in this. But I I try my best to listen with an objective mind. Mm, mm. Okay. I mean, like, I believe you. Like, honestly, I don't ever like doubt your... um, Like, your... I want to say doubt your opinion. That doesn't make sense. I'm just saying, I never like. I think I, you know what you're saying. I get what you mean. Though. Yeah. I, so this, mean. I think we all get it. The listeners, me, you, we all get it. Don't worry, guys. We're all on the same page. <laughs> um, well, you know, we talked about like him not releasing like too many singles and stuff, but like out of the singles he released, no stress. Guys, that's the one. I just, hey, the energy he came with when he entered. I got the 50. Lady, we don't like no stress. She got that one, but, but she needs need some love. love. <laughs> it was just very like, hello, it's whiskey. Yeah. I'm here. I almost even felt that energy of like Pakumo. Like guys, Pakumo felt like the guy was really saying, "Me, I'll sing today." Like it was yeah. just very like, you know. And like I appreciated that. I think that's one thing that I love from like Nigerian artists, which kind of gets me like it's a blessing and kind of like a curse. The fact that that's something I love of this that. Energy. They come with. They come with sometimes. I'm like, yo, guys, like, it's a lot. So, like, definitely, uh, no stress was the one for me. It was just direct in, I'm here, voice there. Yeah, no, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved yeah, no it. No stress was a good song. At first, I did not like no stress. To be <gasps> when you released the single, I was uh-huh. like, okay, I, it had to grow on me. Yeah. And you see, I'm saying that even with yeah. my bias. Don't you think though it was like more old with kid? I feel like that's it really, was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why I think I liked it so much. That's the one that I had appreciated. Yeah. No, definitely. So I'm I'm glad he put, you know, he put something in just to give us, you know, those who are still reminiscing the old dates, just to put for us something. Woo! True love. I don't know the other words. <laughs> but like Yeah. I think it was a bit one tune. You talked about Te Iwa. Te Iwa, yeah. Is that how you say Te Iwa? Yeah. Tell me a bit about Te Iwa, to be honest. I, uh, before this, I hadn't heard of He's, them. He's uh, one of the uh, emerging artists out of Nigeria's Ote scene. Mm, Ote. Yeah, Ote scene. And he's great. He has a song, Monica. Mm-hmm. It's a great song. It's like his top song right now. He just dropped a video for it. He's been grinding at this since the time of um, Odun season. Oh, wow. But yeah. this is like his first big feature, I'm assuming. Yeah, this is his Yeah, first. this is a big feature, by the way. To be on a Whiskey album, you know you're doing something. Yeah. But wow, man, True Love. That's the song, guys. That's, that's, the, song, that's yeah. the one. One thing that I, f- I have to, you know, applaud Whiskey for and found very interesting was, especially on this song, it's like he gave the features the lead. 
on this one it did feel very much like he took a step back in a like a, a nice way like an interesting way it almost felt like you know how um people have like prodigies or they're like bringing others up oh, yeah. yeah that's what it almost felt like he's like because he still contributed but he just knew that he could really overtake on that song but you let them do their yeah, thing yeah that was i i like that i have to appreciate that honestly um but now one thing when i was listening to true love i noticed from the first take i was like wait I'm getting that Afro dancehall feel or like if Afro dancehall is not even a genre to some of you, maybe when African artists attempt to like sort of make dancehall music or reggae style. But this one felt particularly authentic, right? Especially when you get into like, I think it's the third verse. And I was kind of confused because I'm like, you know, it's not that the other ones are bad, but why does this feel so authentic? And then I go and I'm looking at the features and then I'm seeing projects. I'd never heard of projects, but I go look up their page and they're Jamaican. So now I'm like, oh, okay. Like the patois is like very, you know, conk is concentrated, that, yeah. like the, you know, the melody, everything. Right. So that was, that was definitely interesting. I think like you have to big up Wizkid for making sure that I think, you know, that's where we fall short sometimes trying to sort of create a sound or create a certain song in a certain genre and not really getting as much as you can from the source but i like that he did that getting like a jamaican artist on that song yeah but do you think every artist needs someone from that genre to get the right sound no it's difficult to get the right sound when you're not because that's the thing people make music making music is not you know making music is not just one two three yeah. you get what i mean already it's like making something from school scratch sort of or something that is like coming from just your influences is like much easier than trying to replicate something from a place that you have little proximity to but music is universal so, and the digital age you listen to music you can listen to music like that so the more you consume something don't you think you get better at that thing Yes, but then you have to understand that there's certain key factors to certain genres, right? Let me take, for example, in my opinion, like dancehall, which is now language, not lyrics. I'm talking about language, right? Jamaican patois. That thing is very key to that genre, right? And a lot of the people who are making music within this, um, who are not, who don't speak it, right, fluently, and are trying to add that. To, um, are trying to do that style they can't replicate it very well right there's also that um there's like sometimes it's also the delivery of certain whether it's singing or whether it's rapping the delivery of it requires um different tonation accents now how do you replicating that is it you can tell when something is replicated okay now those are some aspects which is pertaining to like i think language lyrics whatnot now think about production wise as well right we can take for example i'm a piano it has not been easy for artists producers djs outside of south south africa south africa and southern africa to make i'm a piano songs to the um the caliber of those coming from Cabs are the small DJ Maparisa, like these guys. And you have to be honest, that yes, you can listen to all the music, you can understand. They can be a very good producer. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. But there's more that goes into music. Do you get what I mean? Than the technical part of it, you know? Right? And even those who succeed sometimes, I've seen it with um, like other artists who maybe they're like a producer, they want to make Amapiano music. They will look for a South African vocalist, right? Because that's another key thing. Those, uh, a lot of the women, wow, 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 wow. Moonchild, Sonelli, um, who else is a great vocalist on a lot of these songs? I haven't even forgotten. But like, because we're not talking about I'm a piano right now, right? But do you see what I'm saying? It's, even you know, there's certain times that like, how it's not very easy to replicate Afrobeats. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Especially when you, because you can only break down something to a certain level, right? You might have a whole song. You think that you hear different types of song, you're like, this is Afrobeats, right? And now you try to break it down into, okay, Afrobeats is comprised of lyrics. It's comprised of like 
whether it's flow if you're rapping whether it's the way you sing then it's comprised of um this t- drums are a huge thing right these drum patterns then it's comprised of this and this and that some of those things you will not be able to replicate right they're the ones which are less um less obvious definitely it's the ones which are less like apparent right that's not to say that they shouldn't that's what i'm trying to say i'm not saying that um african artists shouldn't make dancehall music or this afro dancehall genre shouldn't come up and whatnot right especially with this song true love what i'm trying to say is that collaboration is good right if you can have the original thing it slaps more okay you don't have to do it every single time you want experiment movie you've seen drake do his whole i'm uh, making dancehall music whatnot and he did that thing the first thing he did was sample popcorn in one dance do you get what i mean then we got drake and popcorn features the drake and popcorn features I feel like if they were done at the same time, they will maybe do better. That's the other thing. How good a song is, for me personally, doesn't... It's not limited to how well it does. Do you get what I mean? Someone might not say, well, I mean, with the feature from artists like West Indian artists or from uh, Caribbean, it doesn't... You know, the song doesn't sell more just when you feature them or not. That's okay. But is it... Does You know, there are other factors. The authenticity. How does it sound? All those different things. Does it reach more audience? That will reach a greater audience. Do you get what I mean? You get all his families as well. So for me, definitely, that's why I really appreciate the fact that Projects was featured on True Love. And it just, hey, man, you when Projects started, I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. I think it's something that'll be a number one. Da, 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 yeah. da, 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 Oh, nah, it was sweet. I get that. I get that. But um, what did you think about the song with Thames? Ah, oh, um, I don't. What? what? Don't, don't, don't give me that face. Don't give me I don't face, please. That song is fire. W- which one is it again? Oh, essence. Essence. Yeah, no, I definitely heard it. Um, maybe it's better for you tell us what you think about it. I think Whiskey and Thames killed that song, cause. That song is one of my best songs on the project. True Love, Essence, Gyrate. And that song slaps. Thames came in with her vocals and killed it. Because Thames always kills stuff. And Whiskey sublimes inside the vocals and everything just enters. So that's mm. one of my best songs on the album. The beat, the flow, everything was great. It was very mature. I, you know... Thames is great. The song just didn't do it for me. Okay. I think, yeah, that's why I think I do feel that the album was a bit long. They felt like a number of filler songs and just like, it just didn't do it for me. So you that's know? a filler song to you? No, it's definitely not a filler song. It's just one of those songs that could have been switched out with a couple others. So I feel like it was like time to choose and, you know, I didn't feel like they were chosen well. I don't feel like the selection was done very well, you know? And that's understandable. Over that long period of time, right, the amount of what he's trying to do, maybe there's a bigger purpose to the album being that long, right? And I haven't understood that yet. But for me, yeah, there's a reason I'm not going to talk about that song. It's just, okay. it didn't stand out to me. Okay. Um. But there's, you know, the other thing is, it's still not bad because there's like a number of songs which like, I feel like that one, Sweet One, they're like songs which I feel like can just be played in the background. Like, this is, to me, more of a timeless album. Like, oh, timeless. Actually, that's a... <laughs> Whoa, that, that word is very... <laughs> you don't just call anything timeless. <laughs> what I'll say is that this is not, a, um, like, a, a big hit album and then you drop it. I feel like that's the nice thing I like about it. It's relaxing. The album is smooth. It's soft. Like, you can just leave it playing. It's not all this... Hey, 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 too much Zanku, ba, 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 everything. Like, do you get what I mean? Yeah. It's one of those albums where it can be, a, like, it can be played anywhere. Like, the mood it can sort of create, I feel like, is it's pretty diverse. So that's what I appreciate, definitely. Um, And Sweet One, yeah. It has a jazz feel to it or, like, you know, like a classic piece. It's not too heavy on the vocals, not too heavy with the beat. Just, you know, it gives you that nice instrumental. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I like that. He... The guy made a lasting album. He did. Like, it's not one that is like, ah, it's going to expire soon. It's pretty lasting. Yeah, all the songs are pretty great songs mm-hmm. that would be able to, They'll play on repeat in ah. a lot of spaces. 
that's what I, that's literally why I was gonna say the opposite is why I was gonna say it's timeless because I feel like it's not going to get exhausted in the club. Yeah. Like they're not going to play a lot of these songs. Yeah, but they're gonna 7. play a lot at chill chill parties or if you're going if you're having a chill hangout with your friends. This is the yeah. type of songs they'll be playing. Which is good. I mean, it allows for it to actually like last, as opposed to you oh, guys when they play. They say played everywhere, radio, club, what, what, what. You at some point, you guys become tired. So you know, that's great. So I would say, you know, how we've. I think overall, there's kind of like been this acceptance from I think me, you, and like I've been seeing it from lots of other people, right? That there's a general theme throughout the album. So this some people are calling it he's like creating a new genre of like afro r&b others are saying no this is the one for mature people others are saying i hear if you don't have anybody sorry because you won't enjoy this album with us <laughs> if you don't have eh, somebody to enjoy to so sorry Lovingos. but like i think yeah lovingos <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny i should actually show you guys where i read that thing um on twitter um, basically, so that theme, that's what I was actually getting to. Do you think that it is overpowering in that it didn't allow for more experimentation, like maybe to bring a different variety or like reinvent himself? What do you think? I feel like it wasn't overpowering. I think it did the amount of experimentation he felt was necessary for him to do. Mm -hmm. And he did what he felt he could do very well. Mm. And that was what he did. I don't see anything wrong with him not experimenting more than he did on this album. And I feel like Whiskey still has at least a lot, a couple more albums in him. And he could go off on the next album. but A couple more? Okay. <laughs> You don't I hope believe he has a couple more. <laughs> I mean, with the time differences between the albums, I don't know if there are a couple, maybe one more, but a couple. Okay, they maybe. don't come out every year, boss. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel Whiskey still has a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's... I, I think he has a lot to offer, but as more of a, like, godfather figure. I'm, like, I see Whiskey now, at least in his career, to be doing what Diddy's doing. I don't expect more musical... Money. I expect production executive producer you get what i mean creating this label bringing up these young artists mentoring like what that's what i'm expecting when whiskey at this point um so it's interesting to see that like for you it's like he still has a couple more albums and whatnot at the end of the day as the first thing he's a musician and if that's what he wants to keep doing who am i to say oh you're meant to go to an executive branch now and start you know you know helping people produce this if he wants to keep singing songs you're very defensive of him have you come to realize like throughout this episode i never said that i the same way you said oh he still has a few like uh, that's what i expected <laughs> of him i also just said what i expected of him. like you are ready <laughs> anybody say anything Tori is ready for you don't play with kids no i'm just saying i'm not i'm not being defensive or anything i'm just saying whiskey will do what whiskey will do and nobody should be able to say you know you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, and or you should be doing this, you should be doing that, because at the end of the day, he's a musician, and if he wants to keep singing till he's 80, he will keep singing till he's 80. And there's nothing wrong with that. He has no... He has a... He should be bringing young people up, but he has no obligation to, if that makes any sense. It'll be a smart move to be like Diddy, but if he doesn't want to, it's not a bad thing. That's what I'm saying. Hmm. As I'm reflecting. <laughs> I this is this is very interesting to me. Um what do I find very interesting? I just find your stance on a lot of this very interesting. How so? Um I think maybe it's also because you're an artist. Do you get what I mean? I think there's that I really truly understand because I've seen it. I have a lot of friends who are artists. My the way I look at things as like a consumer of music sometimes can be very like you know the way as you were talking about how nobody should say anything like if he wants to 
my response is like, oh, we should say what we want. Like, like, if you're going to come on stage and tell people, guys, stream my something, so, oh, us too, let us say what we want. Like, do you know what I mean? But yeah, but it, I say stream my something, something. If you stream it and you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. So it's not like I'm forcing you to do anything you don't. But you just to. asked us to. Like, it's, that's what, it's like, I don't, I think it's just funny to me how it's like, it's almost like you want to have your cake and eat it too. You can't, <laughs> you can't put yourself, this is, ah, this is exactly it. You're basically saying he, like you or him or replace anyone is that you should be able to put yourself out there, want people to come to you, but the minute you want to change or you don't like what they're coming to you, now they should stay away. Like, now that's they should no, That's not what I'm saying. Yes, but... you are. You're saying that, yeah, no. Whiskey should come and put his stuff out, or Toro should come but and put his stuff out. But you came to Whiskey and he came out here no, as a musician. As, as artists are coming up, to, nobody came to you to come and tell you make okay, song. Okay, but... You made the song and told us, listen. Okay, and he came out and he made a song. He said that uh-huh. he made a song, a musical Piece, composition. Composition. He made yes. a song as a musician. Yeah, and now you're saying it? it you should have publishing be. rights, then you have masters. So there's a master now. Yes, yeah, so okay. he made a song. Yeah. He came up with a song to attract people. So it should still be that song that's attracting people, nothing else. <laughs> Guys, uh the you're music should be artists, what's... you're on a high horse. No, the music should be what speaks. That's the <laughs> that's the bedrock of everything. Because if if the music doesn't speak, then it's just celebrity and all oh, that. Oh, Tor, how have we reached this? Like, we weren't even... You know what? Let us even just bring ourselves back, back to... to the topic, yeah, okay. Made in Lagos, because <laughs> this one has taken me far. Um, yeah, definitely, no. What was I even saying? Yeah, for me, it was, like, just not enough experimentation. At first, as I thought. But then I said, let me, let me actually look at what... Those who seem to really feel like they appreciate the fact that that theme is consistent, like it seems very cohesive to them. Why? Like, what is it? What were they looking for that they feel was really delivered? And one thing that stood out to me, right? I mean, aside from having a lot of Nigerian friends, just like, of course, a lot of the tweets about Made in Lagos was coming from Nigerians in the diaspora, was coming from Nigerians on the continent. So I'm like reading through that section of Twitter, right? And the general sense I'm sort of getting is that they are tired of all this zanku legwork. Too much, too much dance to every song. The beat is crazy, like, you know? And they just wanted something, something different, honestly. Something more, like, what, what chill. Was chill, yeah. I guess you could even call it chill. Um, I think it's different things to it. It's chill, it's sensual, it's um, mature. It's like, what else is it to that music? How does it make you feel? That's a good way to describe music. It's very um Happy, vibes. That's what guys going, like to say. Yeah. Vibes, easy yeah. going. Yeah, you know? Um and for me, that's what I sort of came to realise. It's like guys felt like they didn't have that in their market, right? And they were like, No, Whiskey has delivered this was and that's why I can agree. Definitely if that's what he was looking to do with this album, he he achieved that, right? Bringing that new sound was sort of what his fan base or consumers wanted, at least some part of them. But for me, it was also interesting because it was like, this is, I have so much of this type of music that it almost, I could have been on the verge of being annoyed that this album was so much, that was the theme. Do you get what I mean? Because now me on the flip side, I consume a lot of stuff like this, right? Now it's, of course, there's not like, that's the difficult thing with music. You can't really say like this, like that. No, things are unique. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying that there's certain things which also you could connect it, right? There's other music I listen to which you could connect the two by saying they're both sensual songs or they're both um, heavy on, like, the guitar or they're both, you know, slow, right? Yeah, and I think I about that. artists, like, a lot of these African French boys, like, yeah, Levis, I think about Tacey, I think about... MHD! I, MHD doesn't make music like this. I think <laughs> I think you've mixed him up with someone. Yeah, MHD you makes said trap. French boys. Yeah, Daju, maybe you want to say. Okay. Not MHD. Tacey. Tacey. Who's the one from Haiti? I think Tacey might actually be from Haiti. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely these guys. And like, on the continent, who else would I say? Um, it's making that type of stuff. Ah, I feel like Melvito, Gabsy, um... So you would compare Mavito's song to this Made in Lagos? No, I'm not comparing it. I'm just saying that... 
It's if the it's... same genre, if it was a genre. Hmm. Would I say the same genre? No. Oh, yeah. I could throw in a couple um, One Day Call songs in there as well and say they're part of that same genre. Yeah. And those guys, I mean, they're also a group who don't make a lot of music. I feel like they don't put out a lot, right? Which is not to critique that, but I understand why now it's like that market is not as filled as it could be. So I'm trying to say the proportion between that type of sound, that R&B type sound, I was not sure. And the Zanku Afrobeat situation is it's very disproportional. We get way more of one, right, than the other. So I can understand, especially from big artists. I don't think that uh, the other the other artists on Whiskey's League right now they don't make that type of music. So it's very understandable that like this was exciting for a lot of consumers, right? It's like, wow, like he's you know creating this new space and we're getting what we wanted out of that. Um, so that's one thing that I definitely appreciate. And I think that thing changes almost a lot of what I would have said from the very beginning. Because it brought out something to me. And I think it might even be what I personally would end on for this episode. Is that music does different things for different people. Yeah. There is a whole other context to the way I would listen to something. And the way you would listen to that thing. And when people describe that context for you and you come to understand it, suddenly everything, it like it opens your eye. You can now go and listen to this thing very differently. Yeah. For me, that's that's my Made in Lagos review. Yeah. Music means different things to different people. Yes. There's, yeah. And in that, there's, you know, to be more specific, um, it's almost like everyone has a different, well, everyone does have a different set of ears, right? But... Those different set of ears are, you know, what makes those ears unique, that context is vast. And a lot of time you won't actually know that. It's only when someone explains to you and describes what they're listening for, what impacts they're listening, what they expected, what they wanted, what they didn't like, what they do, like, you know? Because everybody's listening for different things. Exactly. That's when you really get to understand some why someone feels that way about this song or this album or that one compared to the other. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I mean, that's it for you. That's the Bella Bells podcast. You know, we always deliver. So thank you guys for listening. Make sure to go and stream Roadman's music everywhere. Spotify, Apple Music. Tind- uh, Tidal. Uh, oh, I think uh, someone went to say Tinder. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not there. <laughs> Tidal. Are you okay. on Deezer? Uh, Deezer. Deezer, Amazon yeah. Amazon Music. Google okay, Music. Okay. YouTube's. So now there's no excuse, guys. You have every single option. My personal fave will have to be Banner, of course, featuring Boy Story. So go and follow them both. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at BellaBellsN. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at BellaBells.jpg. You can find this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SoundCloud. And yeah, there you have it. Episode 5. Vibes. 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 Stay chillin', stay good. Yes, sir.